Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab. So many of you will be excited to know that I'm bringing back the Precious Metals Refining and Recovery series. So one thing that has been requested many times by people is to refine some of this uh, silver solder here. This is the stuff used in plumbing to replace leaded solder. The uh, silver is added to it in about 1 to 5% by weight to help the mechanical uh, properties of the solder. This is actually a sample that uh, a fan sent me and not just one or even two but three separate people have sent me rolls of solder to refine. Uh, that's, so obviously you guys want to see this done. So anyway uh, since this is a new season I guess of this uh, series I would like to mention again that I am not doing this to make money. Like. There's no way I'm going to make back any sort of money uh, refining these rolls of silver. Uh, at best, I'll probably recover just a few grams of silver worth just a few dollars, and that's not going to re recoup uh, my processing, even if I got this stuff for free. I'm mostly doing this series to explore the chemistry. That said, uh, my first uh, idea for extracting the silver from this was just to dissolve the whole thing in some muriatic acid, or hydrochloric acid. Uh, Hydrochloric and muriatic are the same thing, by the way. This is mostly tin, probably like 95% tin, and tin is soluble in the hydrochloric acid, but silver is not. So it would be fairly uh, simple to do that. But I did the math, and it looks like to do a quarter pound of this stuff, it would take almost a half a gallon of acid if I account for evaporation losses and stuff because uh, the tin dissolves rather slowly. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set up an electrolytic cell here. I'm going to set this up. And I'm going to use primarily electricity to oxidize the tin and uh, perhaps recover it over here and actually be uh, left with a purified tin sample, which is something that I might be using in another video as well. Let's weigh this over here. That looks like 109 and a half grams, which is supposed to be 113 grams on the roll, so that, that's probably about right. So let's uh, take this back over here. I'm going to wind this into a coil and we'll make our electrolyte solution. So this is what I've come up with here. I've just wrapped this into a coil around a piece of a uh, half inch dowel and I've bent the ends so I can hang it on the edge of this uh, glass dish. A little bit of space underneath so materials can fall off of this and not short things out. So now for the electrolyte, which is primarily going to be water, which is generally the case. I'm going to add enough water to completely cover the coil here. I'm just going to add a splash of muriatic acid. Now. This is mostly just because it conducts electricity really well and has lots of uh, chlorine. Uh, if there's chlorine in the solution, the silver will not be soluble. I suppose you could use salt, but if you've got muriatic acid, you may as well because it will actually react with the tin a little bit. So now I am going to hook these up. I've got uh, 16 volts direct current between these uh, two terminals here. Put the negative electrode over there on that stainless steel spoon and the positive over here on the coil of metal that I want to destroy. There we go, we got some hydrogen gas bubbling off. Soon we should see some tin being precipitated out over here. Now if you look at the uh, reactivity series of metals, you'll find that tin is much uh, lower on the activity series. So uh, that'll be the first thing to be oxidized and pulled off of this. The first thing to go into solution. Uh, copper, bismuth, silver, all that stuff is going to fall out of the solution and settle onto the bottom of the uh, jar here. Look at those crystals forming. Isn't that pretty? Unfortunately, those are very likely to short things out. That's what I got so far. Uh, I didn't get to it in time. Must have shorted out. Fortunately, it acts as its own fuse. So. Wasn't really that big of a deal. So this has been working rather well. You can see this uh, coil is crumbled into pieces and I've processed uh, quite a bit of the tin over. In fact, uh, this has only taken about an hour and a half to do that. There's a lot of tin left here, but easily three quarters of it has been transferred. So I've actually just unrolled this uh, uh, spool of uh, wire here and I'm going to do another one of these. We can do a whole half a pound of tin, so another 115.69 grams. So apparently there is some variation on the uh, weights of these uh, uh, 
spools. Anyway, I'm gonna set this up and we're gonna process another one. Oh, would you look at that? I've electroplated some bubbles. Okay, looks like that's about as done as we're gonna get for this step. As you can see, it's eating my wire right off there. Let's pull the spoon out of that. Get the last of that tin off of it. So, as you can see over here, I've got quite a pile of tin. In fact, I'd say I've transferred over most of it. And uh, what we've got left in the dish, there's a couple of chunks of it in there still. You can kind of see. But primarily it looks like I've just got like copper and silver powder. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out the bigger chunks of tin after I break off all the little uh, bits of silver and copper from them. And I'm just gonna let this sit in the acid overnight. I may even dump off some of this and strengthen the acid a bit to dissolve away these stray pieces of uh, tin crystals. And then once we got that, then we can process it to extract the uh, silver from the copper. And I think what I'm just gonna do here is I'm just gonna take this uh, tin solder that didn't uh, convert and I'll just weigh it and subtract it from the total. I'm sure I could uh, melt it back into a piece of wire and process it again, but at some point I'm just wasting my time. So it's the next morning, and presumably the acid has destroyed most of the tin. Uh, there's probably some tin still left in here, but is definitely reduced in quantity. And so the majority of what we have left here is probably copper and silver. And I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to decant off all of the acid. I got a little jar here I've been pouring it into, and I'll be saving the uh, tin chloride for later use. Now, I need to get rid of the copper. And to do that, I've got several things I can do. Uh, first is nitric acid, of course, but unfortunately nitric acid and tin do not really get along. It makes an insoluble white gunk that is very hard to deal with. I could use sulfuric acid, but then tin doesn't dissolve in that very well either. I could take this and roast it. In fact, uh, commercially, if I was doing very large quantities, I think that would be the way to go. You know, just basically smelt the silver out. But I think today what I'm going to do is just simply add in some more uh, muriatic acid, and then I'm going to add in some hydrogen peroxide to oxidize the copper, and uh, that should dissolve most of it. A little bit of hydrogen peroxide here. Okay. Looks like that's working. I was afraid that maybe the silver would cause it to decompose too rapidly. But really all I need to do is get a little bit of the uh, copper chloride to form and then just oxygen diffusing in from the air will take care of the rest. So the copper chloride kind of acts as like a catalyst to help the copper further uh, decompose. This will take a while though. So I guess I'll come back in, I don't know, six or eight hours. In case you're wondering, I do have a fan, and it is currently going. Normally, though, I turn it off when I'm filming because of reasons which I hope are obvious. So anyway, we've got this, which appears to be done. And I guess that is silver in the bottom there. It seems like not very much, though, so I suspect the pH of this must have been too high. And I've run into an issue of the uh, silver chloride actually dissolving, even though it's not supposed to. So let me actually pour most of this liquid off into this other container here. And let's uh, see if this contains silver chloride simply by diluting the acid. Should also turn from green to blue. Yes, very nice. Okay, any silver precipitating? Okay, there's a little bit of white clouds in there. But it's not very much. I guess this uh, solder didn't have all that much silver in it. Let me, uh, let's wash this off. Mm -hmm. 
So that's really all of our silver. After letting it settle out, washing it, settling out again, I'm left with this. Now, this is primarily silver chloride, but there's not very much here. Now, it might look like a bunch, but having refined silver before, I know that there's, you know, it really expands when it's in water like this. So this is probably much less than a gram here. But we'll put it into a crucible and uh, furnace it down anyway. I don't know what's wrong with this furnace. It just refuses to get hot. Yeah, it got hot for a while and then it started cooling back down. So there's the problem. Looks like a wire burned off. Look at that right there. Looks like the wire goes down and then comes back up. Let it do break off. And then just arc out until it stopped functioning. I ought to have this sent in and have it warrantied. This is a brand new furnace. It shouldn't do this. It's still giving an error. I guess I'm gonna have to see if I can send it in to have it warrantied. In the meantime, it did melt the silver. How about we just break it out of this little crucible instead of pouring it out? Oh, hello, bug. Go away. So, you can probably see right here that there are some beads of silver. Not very much, is it? So let's uh, set this over here on my weighing paper. There we go. Looks like around a tenth of a gram. Now, of course my recovery is not going to be 100%. I lost some because the furnace wasn't hot for long enough and the, you know, the microscopic bees didn't come together. But I don't think I lost 90%, right? I, I would imagine 10 to 30% is what my losses are here. So either I'm a terrible chemist or the companies that make the solder only put enough silver in them to say that they did. <laughs> I mean, if the silver didn't make all that much difference and the price of silver was extremely high, then wouldn't you? Anyway, uh, let's uh, weigh these pieces of solder that didn't get destroyed in the electrolysis. Just to see how much we need to subtract from our totals here so we can get some numbers. Okay, about 29 grams. While I'm at it, I may as well melt down my uh, ball of tin here. Looks like it broke my dish. Yeah, just... Uh, weigh this tin that I recovered. Looks like 110 grams. So I started with around uh, 200 grams of solder that was destroyed with the electrolysis. So I recovered you know, around 50% of the tin. Now that kind of recovery I would expect because well a lot of the tin oxidizes while you uh, are melting it because it's so, so thin. And I have all the tin oxide still, I can still recover that using some acid and stuff. But it may not be worth my time. But I can tell you right now that this tin is worth way more than the silver was. <laughs> Let's see, it's around uh, you know, $10 a pound. That's around a quarter pound right here, so two, three dollars in tin. <laughs> a few cents in silver. Anyway, let's put my gloves back on. Let's do some math. Definitely wouldn't want to get any of this math on my hands. Some nasty stuff, isn't it? So the silver recovered is uh, 0.106 grams. It's point, oh dear, that's really zoomed out. Let's zoom this in a little bit here. So the solder that I started with, 225 grams solder that was left over was uh, 29 grams so that means the solder that we actually processed was 196 grams so uh, 0.106 divided by 196 both of those are three sig figs that's kind of cool uh, that equals point zero 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 five <laughs> four and then converting that to percent that's point zero five four 
100% silver. Now, of course, that means it had at least that much silver in it, right? Uh, they, they, on their website, I think it said that it contained 1 to 5% silver. So I'm seeing, you know, roughly, is that really? Oh, that, that's like a hundredth of what they said they've got in there. Something's up. I may return to this project at some point. Uh, I would love to get one of those XRF uh, handheld devices that we were using back up at the university. Because then I could just uh, check my uh, waste materials and just see, or, or just the solder itself, for instance, and see how much silver it's got in it. And at least I was able to recover it and show you guys the chemistry. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.